Bible. Smack. All right. So we're continuing our series on Davidic dispensationalism. Um, the last one we did. I don't know if we've got like all the order correct. So yeah, got some mercy. I need some mercy there. <laughs> but basically, the last one we did was on the Jewish Church, and I talked about um, the sheepfold and how the church is a literal, local visible body okay because a shepherd needs to have all these qualities he's got to be able to see the sheep gather the sheep together in a visible body okay so this would um, really put me in a direction that's more likened to uh, landmark theology okay and uh, so that's uh, what's landmark Baptist theology there but this is not landmark Baptist theology. Uh, this is Davidic dispensationalism. So, what's going to go on? Well, what you see is you have this establishment of that local body beginning in uh, the Gospels. But we also see where the time of the Gospels was under the law. Okay? And at a later uh, episode, I will go through the transition phase. But I'm going to just do a little bit of a um, exposition. I know I'm using a big word. It sounds a little arrogant, so excuse me. But basically, we're going to do a little Bible study through Acts chapter 15 to really highlight that there is a major transition in Christianity before the um, completion of the canon okay so this represents a shift into what we will call or what theologians call the age of grace typical dispensationalism assumes that there is a shift in Acts chapter 2 and this really follows along the line of a lot of church history teaching now when it comes to interpretation, I think that we should look and listen to the voices of the past. But they're also sinners. They can be stupid too. All right. There there are, you know, places where progress needs to be made in order to be following Christ instead of following them. But we also should not uh, do so brazenly where there's like, oh, I've got a new revelation. You know? No, it, it is what it is. God's revealed to us exactly what we need. And um, I don't know. I just probably opened up a little <laughs> can of worms there or a rabbit trail to run down. Uh, I believe in a continuationism that there are people with gifts of prophecy, but they're not writing books of the Bible. In fact, they're not adding or taking away any revelation or doctrine. If they're revealed something, it's just applying to their personal situation. Okay, Maybe local church personal situation, but still uh, no new doctrine to add to the scripture. Because you should not add to the scripture. That is the canon. It's the measuring rod. Okay. Alright, so going back to it. In Acts chapter 15, we see this great shift and you know next episode we'll go and cover how it went in that slow progress from the Gospels to Acts 15 okay. but we did in the last episode cover the Jewishness okay. now first one and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses ye cannot be saved when therefore Paul um, and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with him they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other men should go up to Jerusalem unto the Apostles and elders about the question about this question 
verse 3, And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice, like Phoenicia, and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it is needful to circumcise them, to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now, this was, they are, you know, physically of the tribe. I don't know. That wasn't a tribe. But they are, you know, born and bred in the group of the Pharisees. But they are believing Christians now, okay? You have to understand that this was not like, okay, you guys are under the law of Moses. Heretic! They were not treated as heretics. Eventually, they would be declared wrong, okay, that we are allowed to do the Gentiles after this council, okay? But, they're not treated as non-brethren, okay? They're not treated as apostates. Now, eventually... This would become a gospel issue. Actually, not very far from here. Paul is going to lay it all out in the gospel. Well, actually, no, the epistle to the Galatians. There is only one gospel of salvation. Okay. But you have to understand that is not laid down in stone at this stage for the followers of the way. Okay. So, it says, there you go. All right. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other men should go up to Jerusalem and un unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought uh, on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring, the conversion of the Gentiles, they they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all things that God had done with them. But there arose certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them, and to command them to keep the law. If you are circumcised, then you are born under the law. Uh, and that is the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together. And that's, that's an important point. Um, this was not just simply, um, well, Peter made the decision. Or the twelve made the decision. It is um, all them, and it's all the elders and teachers of the church. Um, the apostles weren't guaranteed to be the top-notch theologians. They were fishermen. You know, Peter would get pretty good at it. John would get pretty good at it. But he lived a lot longer, <laughs> you know. Yeah, 50 years down the road, he got pretty good at it. Um, but... This was um, the teachers that were with them, the elders and the apostles, getting together in on this one, and they were congregating to meet on this issue. Okay? And, of course, this was... Um, let's see here. This was the representation of Jerusalem. Okay? So it's the one congregation... And it says, And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. Verse 7, And when they there they had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know 
how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles should by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So this is not just the Paul thing. Paul's not just a rebel trying to change Christianity. Peter had received a vision. Okay? And this is where that first group gets converted through the preaching of Peter. It says, um, Hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. These were Gentiles who were not under the law. They got the Holy Ghost. Now, you know, they're like, just like us, who we were under the law. That means if you're not under the law, you can still have the Holy Ghost. All right? That will kind of translate into what we talk about is regeneration um, and sanctification. You get those not by the following of the law. All right? So he says, um, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Dot, period, then verse 10, now. Purifying their hearts, sanctifying them. In the Old Covenant, you repent to get sanctified. Okay? And um, basically, uh, you can you can have some grace, all right, but you have to be following the law system to receive the grace. Well, here we go. And they have received the grace without following the law. And it says, um, now therefore, let's see here yeah. Purifying their hearts by faith. Not of works, is what I'm adding into this, but we know it's also in the other verse of the Bible. But it didn't. He doesn't mention anything about that, but he's sanctifying them by faith alone. Verse 10. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Okay. We didn't do so good, yo. All right. This is not a winning system. The law tells you you're a sinner. It does not make you a saint. They did not live up to the law. Their ancestors did not live up to the law. Why are you telling these Gentiles that they have to live up to the law when you don't have to live up to the law and you're a Jew? You're under this sucker, right? See, this is different, okay? In the book of Romans, Paul talks about it. It's the righteousness of God by faith. Now it works. It's, it's not like the normal righteousness that we talk about with the Old Testament. It's a new righteousness. The righteousness of God. So, find a place again. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. The grace, the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is the gift? The Lord Jesus Christ. What about the Lord Jesus Christ? He was sent here on earth to die on the cross for our sins and conquer death for us to be risen and exalted. We shall be saved even as they. Doesn't matter if you're a Jew or a Gentile, you need to be saved. Or maybe even half a Jew, okay? You need to be saved. It's salvation you need, not Jewish works, not Gentile works, okay? It says, Then all the multitude 
kept silence and gave the audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the, men, among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Now remember, who's James? James is the brother of Jesus. Okay. He's also the pastor of the church in Jerusalem. Very important point. Peter would go off somewhere, but in Jerusalem, James remained. And James is the more law-keeping of all the books in the gospel. That's why, you know, we've always heard famously about Martin Luther not wanting anything to do with that book in the canon. He did allow it in the canon, though, okay? <laughs> you can check out the German Bible. It says, um, And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, it's another thing. Everybody there is brethren, okay? So, these guys who are under the law are still brethren. They're just wrong, okay? Or they'll be proven wrong. I'm sorry, I let the cat out of the bag. Simeon hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this degree, the words of the prophets as it is written, after this I will return and build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles, upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Now that is a quote from, not a full quote, but there's a quote inside that from Amos chapter 9. Let me go ahead and read it here. You forget it, right? Okay. In that day, I will. Sorry, this is 9 11. Emergency, 9 11. Amos. In that day, will I raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen? And close it. You know, they could have said, I'll raise up the temple of Solomon. He didn't say that. It was the tabernacle of David that was going to be restored. You can listen to the last message on the tabernacle of David. It says, And close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins, and I will build it as in the, last, as in the days of old. That they may possess the remnant of Edom, and of all the heathen, which are called by my name, saith the Lord, that doeth this. Now, uh, it says, and of all the heathen. And so what's going on here is that God is going to get the heathen who call upon his name. Name of God, Jehovah. God the Son. Jesus, Jehovah saves. And we're called by the name of Jesus Christ. So here we go. Back here. He says, And all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord who doeth all these things, Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is this, that we trouble not them which uh, from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Then pleased it by the apostles and elders 
which the whole church to send chosen men of their own to accompany Antioch and Barnabas, Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barisabas, and Silas, chief among them brethren. And so now they have decided this is good. They will keep things that are the pollution of idols, that they should abstain from those things. Okay? And Paul makes a deal that's a little bit more libertarian, but basically he says, you know, the issue is committing idolatry. All right? Now, he said, look, if it's not a faith, it's a sin. James is like, look, they've all heard Moses. So they should know that the idolatry is not right. So they should just stop the idolatry and so you have this moral issue but we're not under the law what does that mean it means we're not enslaved to Moses because we belong to Christ he owns us but at the same time he also sets us free And so at this point, everything shifts. Now we've gone away from the law keeping, and now we're running towards grace. God bless you, and good day.